So, how do you play all these chords? And this is something that I was just always really um, concerned about and curious. Just like, you know, you have a chart, you have a chord F7, hopefully in tune, and then all these people play all these chords that seems random because you have F7, you're playing all these other shapes. So I want to talk about that exactly. When I used to think about guitar, all I thought about was just... Just the solo. I didn't care about anything else. But actually, when we play music, especially if you play music with people, for people, you also comp a lot. You play with singers, you play and sing. You know, you play music. So it's not only about the lines, it's also about the chords and the comping. And so I started being really aware of that and thinking how can I be better at that? And how do people play so so many cool chords and so many cool sounds and yeah, how does that all work? All right, so what we're gonna do right now is talk about five ways, five levels actually, of how to expand our chord vocabulary. It's actually super simple devices um, that we can use and once you know them, you're like, ah, oh, amazing, easy, got it. And we're gonna work on minor, major, dominant, and then we'll implement that over a blues. We'll do first kind of a simple version blues, just like less chords, and then we'll do a jazzier version. There will be, or actually there is already a PDF that I wrote for you guys, so if you want, you can check it out. Let's roll. The question that I'm trying to ask and kind of answer is this. We have a chord, we have the chord F major, and you have, I mean, F major sounds great, don't get me wrong. I, I love the sound of this chord. But still, sometimes you want some motion, and if you have four bars of F, you know, maybe sometimes it is nice to play. And how do we know how to do that? You know, how, how can we make these choices? And I'm just gonna show you a couple of simple devices right now. And I do feel that once you get the hang of these, you can implement them and connect them uh, in any song. We do that in jazz comping all the time because a lot of times you have these like walking bass lines that guitar players play, you know, if it's a jazz song. So you have these kind of like, yeah, chords with the bass line and basically you're playing a chord every quarter. Now you don't have to do that and you can take, you know, a pop song with, with one chord and just trying to find some inversion or some motion in between these chords and, and that will be totally, totally fine. All right, let's dive in. If you like this kind of content and wanna support me and allowing me to create more of this stuff for you guys, please check out the Patreon. There's a lot of PDFs, including for this video and just a lot of information there. One, dominant. So I'm gonna take the chord F7. You have to do that, but that's not gonna work otherwise. I'm gonna use a shell chord. If you're not aware of shell chords, you can check this video. In any case, this is the shape here. And I'm gonna do this kind of walking movement. Now, why am I doing that? Well, first and foremost, and that's the most important rule, quote unquote, is it sounds good. And I think that's a valid answer within the realm of music. Because like, at the end of the day, you just want the music to sound good. That's, that's it, you know, and whatever sounds good to you is valid, you don't need to explain it. It is oftentimes cool to understand and explain things, but at the end of the day, or, right, it's just a vibe, whether it's with distortion or without, I'm creating some motion that is interesting. So let's see exactly what I'm doing. And the point and the strength of these devices is whenever you have a dominant chord, whenever you see an F7 walking down the street, you can take this F7 or dominant chord and add these things. Again, you know, if you're playing a gig with Britney Spears and you're playing F7, you might want to think about the motion and if it's needed, but in general, you can totally do that. So F7 and then let me tune. Ooh, I have a question. So if you were able to imagine the wildest duo ever, what would that be? I have an idea as well, but I'm curious what you guys say. Please drop a comment. I want the wildest duo 
show in the universe. So we have F7 in tune-ish. And then I'm playing this chord. What is this chord? This is basically E flat first inversion over G basically. So G, E flat and B flat. And the whole kind of thing is just emotion to get to this chord. Um, so it's F7, then this E flat, and then it's E, right? And this is just a chromatic chord, just a passing chord, E first inversion, to A major first inversion, A, F, and C. And you can also do that um, if you want to have that F on top with that sound. Check it out one more time. Or... And of course, if you're comfortable with the notes around the around the fretboard you can add or change the, the sound if you want F major 7 etc etc but for now let's just do that so this is the shape and the, the device we're going to use for dominant chord it's going to also be valid for B flat 7 right this kind of motion two all right so now we're going to take A minor chord. I love the sound of just a third honestly it sounds so beautiful on guitar so you can check this first and then we can try adding also the seven so let's start with this just one and three so this is a G minor and then I want to get here which is G minor first inversion B flat G and D literally one three five just in inversion so the bass is B flat instead of G right but I'm gonna add like a little chord in between and that chord is A now I can play G minor A diminished to G minor first inversion which to me sounds beautiful check it out again you can do a little hammer on if you like or you can just do it without a seventh, so just A minor basically to the G minor first inversion. Now this all sounds good, but more than you know, just the little thing we did here, I think it's important to understand the device we're using. So we have the chord G minor and we just want to expand it a little bit. And this is something that all classical composers uh, did, uh, also Baroque. I mean, it's just a very sustainable way to establish the key center using the one chord seventh chord first inversion to the one first inversion this is almost like playing chess when you have specific openings um, you know you move the pawn here or you start with a horse etc etc um so this is kind of the same way you establish the key center in a very clear way and here we have this establishment of a, a minor chord g minor the seventh of G minor, basically F sharp diminished first inversion, but for us we can think about it as A diminished if you want, that's totally fine, to G minor first inversion. So, I mean, just grabbing those three chords, basically just G minor, G minor first inversion, uh, G, A diminished to G minor first inversion, feels really fun. I mean, it's just like, you know, it's just one tonality, but you can mess around with that, even just as a, as a loop. Three. The same way we've expanded our dominant and minor, now we're gonna expand, expand the major. So, basically I'm gonna take G major and I'm gonna play the second degree, to the flat three is a passing chord to the third degree. Now you can think about this one as either one first inversion or really a three, like literally the third degree. You can play it just one and three or minor seven. Check this out. All right, so this could be interpreted as G major first inversion or really as a B minor, this kind of color. Now the third degree, um, could function as what we call a 
tonic substitution. These are just simple names to express the idea that the one, if we're in the key of G major, the one is called a tonic, that's the center of gravity. And then instead of playing that, we can play the third degree, the B minor. So again, it's not the same sound, but they have this kind of common functionality in that case, which means kind of like feeling home, if that makes sense. So check it out. And it's important to hear it and understand it because we can use it when we have a C major 7 chord. We just play... Right? So I have a C major chord in the chart or the song I wrote and instead of just playing like... I can play... It's the idea and the concept that I love so much because we are using information we have, we know D minor, we know E minor, but just by altering our consciousness in a way, right, learning this cool concept, we can find so many more chords and ideas, which is just like amazing. And it just sounds so good. Four. All right, so now we're gonna actually apply it to a song. We're gonna grab a blues, let's do a blues in the key of A, why not? We're gonna use only three chords, so we're gonna use A7 to D7 and then back to A7. And I'm gonna use the same kind of devices, so we have basically three chords, the A7, the D7, and then later on E7 and D7. A7 to D7. And you don't have to use it all the time, but it's kind of fun. And I'm gonna do the same thing, just ascending and descending. D7. Maybe I'll stay on D7. Just regular. A7. To E7. D7. Right, so what happened here, we took a blues which had literally three chords, but we played many more chords, but we used only one device. But I think it's already sounding cool. And again, it could be more jazzy, it could be more... You know, more shuffly or, you know, once you put a little bit of distortion already has like a different kind of flavor and vibe but again these devices are being used all the time whether it's Stevie Ray or different blues artists it's just like incredible and they would use that not only as comping but they would grab these ideas and also improvise with them so they would kind of expand their A7 into different chords utilizing these different devices. Five. All right so I'm happy you're still here this is super cool I'm gonna grab an F blues a jazz version of f blues you can check out the chords here and i'm gonna kind of alter the changes a little bit just adding some chord utilizing the devices we just spoke about i'm gonna play it one time up front 12 bars and then we'll break it down to see all the devices and little things that i'm using there okay i'm mainly gonna use these elements but i might add one little thing check it out see exactly bar by bar what's happening here so I started the first thing the first bar literally just the device we talked about we have an F7 we just ascend with this shape then copy paste to B flat very chill and easy now the same thing ascending descending one thing I added was here I try to sub on the F7 I played B7 here to kind of lead us to the B flat and then the same shape happened here, literally copy paste. And then on the B diminished, which is a basically B flat seven, flat nine, just a little bit of color. I just played the chord, didn't do anything. Here I did F major, second uh, inversion. So F over C, just try it, like literally one, three, five. 
two beats and then E, E flat to D. So basically descending those dominant chords leading to D7. So and then on the G minor I did this, the same idea that we had before, G minor diminished to the first inversion, but then I was using another diminished here on the B leading to the C7. So it's right, so the bass line. So the C7 the same exact device so let's check out the first 10 bars and I'll show you the turnaround which had a little more uh, changes so from the top I'll kind of say it out loud F7 then the B flat the same device quite literally and then F7 ascending descending the same shapes but it sounds cool try to stop B flat ascending the same device B diminished just hanging in there then F major triad, E major, E flat, D, G minor, A diminished, G minor first inversion, B diminished, C7, the same device, and now check this out. We'll isolate that in a second. I hope that's what I played. I think that's what I remember. So F major to basically F. Uh, over E flat, so third inversion to D7, the same trick D7 over C, G minor first inversion, A diminished, uh, and then it's, instead of C, I played C7 but over G, so it's like this diminished shape, and then F sharp 7 as a triad sub to lead here. Again, just a turnaround. And you have a little bit of the bass motion, which is kind of cool. And some of the line, the top line. So, yeah, I mean, it's just... top line there are many options but um, I, I just you know I just played the changes with inversions and I try to find some motion that makes sense um, and you see how I'm using the devices even if I do it in reverse here with the G minor a little bit and adding some trident substitutions to create that motion too resolve. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this was cool and interesting and shed some light on how to expand some chords and comping. I mean, these things take a minute, right? All these concepts you need to practice and sing and hear and mess around and maybe write a little song. So just take your time. I think that's the most important thing and try to create some music with it, practice it as a separate device and then do something. Cool. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.